Because in Kensington and Chelsea, we all know we're always going to get a Conservative because that's just the way it is here. How do you feel about the election coming up? Well, I'm a Labour man myself, like, but, um, you know, I've lost, lost faith in it. Have you ever voted? No. Why don't you vote? Because it make a difference if we do. Views of the election there from Kensington in London and the other Kensington here in Liverpool. We all know the basic drill. They're all the same. They've got nothing to say to it. You'd be forgiven for not noticing it, but underneath all the disillusionment with party politics and those cliches about hard-working families, there are real choices on offer at this election which will affect the country in very different ways. It all depends on which Britain you're in. The proportion of local people here on out-of-work benefits is 30%. The job centre, if I'm honest, it's a bit like a prison. There isn't a job centre anywhere near Kensington High Street. That's probably because here, in the Campton Council Ward, the figure is 2.9%. The average salary is £69,000. Here, if you're lucky enough to be in work, it's 25000 Here, the rate of child poverty is under 5%. Here, it's 45.8%. This is Kensington Palace Gardens, often said to be the most expensive street in Britain, where number seven was recently valued at £43,276,141. £20? Pounds. For 20 houses? For 20 houses, pound a house. Kensington in London is home to some pretty big media voices. The London Evening Standard and the Daily Mail. Here, they've got Liverpool Community Radio. Hello and welcome to Kenny Allen Discs. My name is Steve Farragher. Kensington is somewhere people aspire to live in. It was good housing, it was close to the city centre, uh, and then the 80s came along basically. Unemployment, drugs, uh, although drugs isn't as bad as it was in this area. What we have got is a lot, uh, is sort of the post smack era. We're getting beggars back again in Kensington because people are being sanctioned. How does the fact that elections come in reflect itself here? Talk about it or oh, not talk okay. about it. Okay, let's 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 talk about the election in Kensington. No one's mentioned it because it doesn't doesn't touch on their lives in any remote way. The cuts do. The cuts do, yeah. But they don't think they can do anything about the cuts by who they vote for. We're at the bottom anyway. They have an expression in Liverpool called the bones of your ass. If you're on the bones of your ass, you've got nowhere else to go. Have you got the leaflet for that property in Verona? The one with the asking price of 10,700,000, I think? Well, cheers, I'll have two. How has the area changed in those 20 years? Um, hmm. I used to live not that far away, and it Would feels you? quite different now. In what way does it feel different? Uh, all this building work being done, and maybe the street life's a bit quieter. Well, there are, you hear more languages. You hear less from in American investment bankers who've moved out. An awful lot of money has been put into changing Kensington from what was the result of the 60s. Large houses split up in small units back to large houses. So this really a reflection of the success of London. I remember my father years ago speaking about uh, the sick man of Europe, which was Britain. He would be quite surprised. Behind what some people think of as Kensington's success, is London's status as an offshore tax haven and the super rich and super quiet non-doms who are now in Ed Miliband's sights. What was a really a family neighbourhood isn't a family neighbourhood anymore. Kensington Liverpool has the quiet mm. and the silence of poverty. Yeah. And here you've got the silence and absence of street life of extreme wealth. Well, what's happened here essentially is that London's turned into monarchy. Kensington and Liverpool might be about to lose one of its most important public services. The local Shore Start Children's Centre has just been given a reprieve until 2017, when the council says it'll have to close unless more funding is found. This is a precious thing for Kensington, I think. Yeah. If that was to be taken away, you know, we you would take away. Right. Yeah, it's like looking in the heart out of it, really. Yeah. The staff are so dedicated here, they put you into the right direction to where you need to be, and it just changes your life so much. Has it changed your life? Definitely. Tell me, how, tell me how it's changed your life. I was sitting at home and saying, oh my God, it's just me in this world with 
uh, child disabilities. I was really isolated, really lonely, and I came here, and the, the children's centre have been like a lifeline for me. It makes people to mix with each other, to, to get to know each other. They come into the centre and learn basic English. Where are you from? Portugal. Portugal, where are you from? Cameroon. Okay, and you're from? Malaysia. And you're from? Liverpool. <laughs> Between now and 2017, what what do you think you can do? What are you going to do? Absolutely everything we can do to keep it open, fundraise. It's like the only thing that we have. How many of you are going to vote? All, All of us. us. All of us. And who are you going to vote for? Labour. Labour. Yeah. Labour. Can I say something? No, no, I'll break up. You know. Well, it's difficult to talk about. I think the I think you know. Words like austerity and inequality even, you know, can become very, very cliched until you realise in practice what they actually mean. And when you talk to parents of kids with what are called special and complex needs who are sort of saved by places like this and the children's life chances are improved and even if you want to look on this on the basis of financial arithmetic, further down the line, you know, the government saves money and yet in the most short-sighted, crass, ignorant way imaginable, money's getting withdrawn from cities like Liverpool and places like this are threatened with closure and it's just the most awful, awful thing to see. The Tories are promising at least three more years of austerity and £12 billion of further benefit cuts. Labour, meanwhile, has come up with a couple of flagship policies of its own that will hit hardest in Kensington, London. Right, we're off to meet someone at the heart of the Kensington and Chelsea rebellion against Labour's plans for a mansion attack. Number four would probably go on the market. Number seven would pretty much for sure. If people would move out rather than pay it. Number nine, couldn't afford to pay. Couldn't afford to pay. Number nine, number 32, that one, that one, that one, that one. We bought it 50 years ago this month. How much did you pay for it 50 years ago? Just over 12,000. Good heavens. It's now worth over three million pounds, and John fears that means he'd have to pay around seven thousand pounds a year. It actually won't bring in the treasury any more money, so it doesn't make any sense. Why do you think it's being proposed? I think it is the old-fashioned politics of envy. I'm afraid. I mean, this wasn't for rich people. It was a very mixed area. Still, it's much less so now. That's why that's another reason I think this is an unfair tax. I mean, we've been caught up in something that's happened to an area of London which is it's just a, a fluke. Do you feel rich yourselves? I mean, uh, no, we're comfortably off. We, we have no complaints. We've never been keen on luxuries and, and spending money on, on high living or anything. We only installed central heating in this house five years ago. Do you uh, feel any trepidation about piping up about this in the sense that you're sitting on an asset which is worth a lot of money, yes, you see. And is, I suppose someone's saying, oh, I've had my benefits stopped or I have to use a food bank. But, That's an easy thing to throw at you, isn't it? To pay a tax which you weren't expecting, which you, mm. you budgeted for your pension for the rest of your life to live in the home that you've lived in for years. It's not worth anything unless you sell it or you die. We never looked at it as an investment. We needed a house to have raise a family. Should the Labour Party win the election, do you think this will happen? I'm afraid, genuinely afraid, it will happen. Well, sometimes we have a, a sort of secret motto for these films, which is it's fucking complicated. And uh, the issue of the mansion tax, from their perspective, definitely is. What it tells you, really, about modern politics is that after years of fighting over the so-called centre ground, both Labour and the Tories and now at pains to somehow reassure their core support that they're the same parties they ever were. The Tories are banging on about austerity and benefit cuts. Labour's pitch this time is partly about clobbering the rich. As an old Liverpudlian folk song put it, two tribes are going to war. And in some places, a long way from here, it's already getting noisy. No bets, no votes, no central government votes. We're not backing off yet until they tell us that they are going to keep our short start, our children's centres open, not for two years, indefinite. We're yeah. going to fight yeah. to the end. Yeah. Is it on demonstrations before? No, it's first, it's first one. one. Very first one, yeah, first one. I think it'll make other people stand up for, for the centres, no people that have not attended today and seen how, how important it is to the people and how precious it, how precious it is to us. Change people's minds, raise their consciousness. 
I hope so. I hope they vote. Biggest one, vote. It's a voice for ordinary people. Yeah, well, we want to get our country back from Brussels, you know. Nigel, he's coming to the town, you know. I know he is. Are you yeah. coming to see him? Oh, definitely. Could I give you a leaflet? No, 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 no. But you are a supporter? No, of course no. I'm not. <laughs>